the world is holding its breath. Because in a few days, Hi-Rise will release the clearest images ever captured of 3i Atlas, and those images could confirm whether this interstellar visitor is breaking apart or breaking the rules. Let me take you back to when we first spotted it. Picture this, a tiny dot moving against the background of stars, coming from a direction that immediately told us something incredible. This wasn't from our neighborhood. This thing traveled across the vast emptiness between stars to reach us. We've only seen two confirmed interstellar objects before this. The first one, Oumuamua, caused a storm of debate back in 2017. The second one was less controversial. But 3i Atlas? This one's different. Really different. When astronomers started tracking it, they noticed something strange right away. It had a tail. Now, comets have tails. That's normal. But here's the problem. This tail was pointing in the wrong direction. Let me explain what I mean. When a comet gets close to the sun, the sun's radiation pushes dust particles away from the comet, creating that beautiful tail we all recognize. The tail always points away from the sun, always. It's one of those rules in space that you can count on, like gravity or the speed of light. Except, 3i Atlas decided to break that rule. Its tail, what scientists are calling an anti-tail, points toward the sun, toward it. Like the object is defying one of the most basic principles of comet behavior. Now, before your mind starts racing to certain conclusions, let me say this. There are natural explanations for anti-tails. Sometimes it's about the angle we're viewing from. Sometimes it's about the size and weight of dust particles falling back. Sometimes it's about geometry playing tricks on our eyes. But here's what kept me up at night. We couldn't confirm any of those explanations because we were looking at it from the wrong angle. In July 2025, the Hubble Space Telescope turned its eye toward 3i Atlas. Now, Hubble has given us some of the most breathtaking images in the history of astronomy. Distant galaxies, star birth, the pillars of creation. So when Hubble aimed at our mysterious visitor, we expected answers. What we got instead were more questions. The image showed this ghostly structure extending from the object, pointing back toward the sun. But here's the frustrating part. Hubble was looking at it almost edge-on. The viewing angle was only 10 degrees off from the sun's direction relative to the object. Imagine trying to figure out the shape of a building when you're standing directly underneath it. You can see something's there, you can tell it's tall, but you can't really understand its true structure. That's what we were dealing with. The image was stunning, don't get me wrong, but it was ambiguous. Scientists started debating immediately. Some said it was just heavy dust particles, behaving unusually. Others pointed out that the brightness, patterns didn't match typical cometary behavior. And a few, myself included, wondered if we were seeing something that required a completely new explanation. But we needed a different perspective. We needed to see this thing from the side, not edge on. We needed clearer resolution, better detail, a view that wasn't obscured by the sun's glare. And then someone realized, we have a camera already in the perfect position, not on Earth, not in Earth's orbit, but 140 million miles away, on Mars. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter has been circling Mars since 2006. On board is something called HiRISE, the High Resolution Imaging Science Experiment. It's the most powerful camera we've ever put around another planet. And on October 2nd and 3rd, when 3i Atlas passed within 18 million miles of Mars, HiRISE was watching. Now here's where it gets really interesting. From Mars's position, the camera had a side view of the object, not edge-on like Hubble, a clean, unobstructed, side-on perspective. Plus, HiRISE has three times better resolution than Hubble for this particular observation. Think about what that means. We could see the anti-tail's true structure. We could measure the jets coming off the object. We could determine if the brightness was concentrated in one spot or spread across multiple fragments. We could finally answer the question. Is this one object, or has it broken apart into pieces? The images were captured, the data was recorded, everything was ready to be analyzed. And then, nothing. For 43 days, those images sat in NASA's servers, unreleased. Not because scientists were studying them in secret, not because they found something they wanted to hide, but because of a government continuing resolution, a bureaucratic freeze that stopped the normal release pipeline. Meanwhile, other space agencies released their images. Europe's observations came out. 
China's Tianwen-1 orbiter shared its data. Amateur astronomers posted their tracking updates. Japanese observatories published brightness measurements. The only silence came from NASA, and that silence, in a moment when the whole world was curious, felt deafening. So, what are we actually looking at? What makes 3i Atlas so puzzling that astronomers around the world are holding their breath waiting for these images? Let me walk you through the mystery piece by piece. First, there's the mass loss problem. When we calculated how much material the jets were throwing off as the object approached the sun, the numbers were staggering. We're talking about 5 billion tons of ejected material. To lose that much mass, the surface area of the nucleus would have to be enormous, much larger than early estimates suggested. But here's the thing. If the object has fragmented into multiple pieces, each piece contributes its own surface area. Suddenly, the math works without requiring one impossibly large nucleus. The high-rise images could show us faint subnuclei, separate objects, traveling together in the same orbital path, discrete dust plumes coming from different sources. If that's what we see, then we're not talking about 3i Atlas anymore. We're talking about the remains of 3i Atlas, an interstellar visitor that got torn apart by the sun's gravity and heat. But what if the images show something else? What if there's no fragmentation? What if the jets appear coordinated, all originating from a single concentrated point? What if the brightness doesn't spread out, like we'd expect from a cloud of debris? Then we have to consider alternatives. And some of those alternatives are uncomfortable for traditional astronomy. Here's what I mean. Natural jets from comets are chaotic. They vent gases randomly as ice sublimates unevenly across the surface. They sputter and fade. They don't follow neat patterns. But the jets from 3i Atlas, if they're coming from a single intact object, would be some of the most powerful and organized we've ever recorded. I'm not saying it's artificial, I'm saying the structure of what we see will tell us which explanations survive and which ones we have to abandon. Science isn't about jumping to conclusions, it's about eliminating possibilities until only the truth remains. The anti-tail adds another layer to this puzzle. If it persists in the side view images, if it shows structured curvature or unexpected brightness patterns, then we're dealing with something more complex than solar radiation pushing dust around. Maybe it's unusual grain sizes. Maybe it's ion interactions we don't fully understand. Or maybe it's a mechanism that looks, from a distance, like directed propulsion. One bright pixel in these images could tell us the difference between a 500-meter rock and a 5-kilometer fragmenting object. And in astronomy, that difference changes everything. Now, while we wait for 3 i Atlas to reveal its secrets, there's another giant moving through the outer solar system, and this one makes 3 i Atlas look tiny. Its name is Bernardinelli Bernstein, nicknamed BB. This thing is over 100 kilometers wide. That's bigger than Lake Erie. It's 10,000 times more massive than 3 i Atlas. And it's coming from the Oort cloud, that distant shell of icy objects surrounding our solar system, left over from when the planets first formed. BB was discovered in 2014, spotted in archival images when it was 29 times farther from the Sun than Earth, almost as far out as Neptune. It won't reach its closest approach until January 2031, when it'll pass just outside Saturn's orbit. Here's why I'm mentioning BB. Because it behaves exactly like we expect. It's sublimating carbon dioxide and ammonia as it warms up. It's following all the rules. It's predictable, slow, and chemically normal. A textbook Oort cloud comet. The contrast is important. BB shows us that our models work. Our understanding of comets is solid when we're dealing with typical objects, which makes 3i Atlas even more significant because this visitor doesn't fit the pattern. It's the anomaly that makes us question, makes us dig deeper makes us realize there's still so much we don't understand. Science advances in that gap between what we expect and what we observe. BB teaches us the baseline. 3i Atlas shows us the exception. And somewhere in between lies new knowledge waiting to be discovered. In a few days, the high-rise images will be released. When they appear on public servers, astronomers around the world will analyze every pixel. Every brightness gradient will be measured. Every tail angle calculated. Every jet traced back to its source, every anomaly catalogued and debated. What we learn in the next week might define how we understand interstellar visitors for decades to come. But here's what matters most. The truth will come from data, not from narratives or gatekeepers or predetermined conclusions. 
When the universe hands us a puzzle, we don't hide the pieces. We put them on the table for everyone to see. 3. Eye Atlas isn't a threat. It's an opportunity. A chance to learn something new, to be humbled by how much we still don't know. And maybe, just maybe, to take one small step toward answering that oldest question. Are we alone? Think about it. A camera orbiting a planet we haven't walked on yet is about to give us the clearest view ever of a visitor from another star system. That's the world we live in now. That's how far we've come. The universe doesn't owe us easy answers, but it rewards patience and curiosity. And when those images finally drop, when millions of people around the world see them for the first time, we'll all be part of that moment of discovery, because that's what makes us human. Not our technology, not our theories, but our courage to look up at the night sky and wonder what's out there. Stay curious. Keep watching. And remember, the best discoveries always come when we're brave enough to question what we think we know. The images are coming, and truth, as always, is stranger than we imagine.